This is section 11.7, strategy for testing series. So this is one of those summary type sections where there's nothing new, um, but instead it discusses all the different tests we've learned in the last few sections and how you can decide which test might be best for you when you're trying to determine if a series converges or diverges. So it's just some guidelines. Okay, so like I said, we've seen several tests but how do you know what to use? Um, the main point of the answer is that there's not an order that you should apply every test in and just go down the list until one works. Instead, you should spend a little bit of time analyzing your specific series and determining which test might be best for your series. Um, that way you don't waste too much time trying tests that aren't gonna help you or that are gonna give you no results in the first place. So, First two would be the most basic series that we know about, our P-series and geometric series. If your series already looks like a P-series or already looks like a geometric series, there's no need to apply any test that we've learned because we already know how these work. If it's a P-series, which is something of the form one over n to the P, we know that it's convergent if P is greater than one and divergent if P is less than or equal to one. If it's a geometric series, which is something of the form a times r to the n minus one or r to the n, then that converges if the absolute value of r is less than one and diverges if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to one. And with geometric series, you sometimes have to do a little bit of work um, to make your series look like a geometric series, but as long as you can put it in this form, then you can use these rules. So if you think your series is one of these, there's no need to even consider a test. You can just knock it out immediately with our knowledge of P-series or geometric series. Um, if your series has a form that kind of looks like a P-series or kind of looks like a geometric series, but you can't make it directly turn into one of those, then you could use a comparison test instead, comparing your series to a P-series that is similar or comparing your series to a geometric series that's similar. Um, if you have something that has some negative terms, then you could apply the comparison test specifically with the absolute value of your series to test for absolute convergence like we saw in section or in the previous section. Okay, number four of things to look at. If you can tell immediately that the limit of your terms a n as n approaches infinity is not zero, then you can use the opposite, the test for divergence, and show, oh, well, because this limit is not zero, I know my series diverges, done. If your series is an alternating series, then use the alternating series test as an option. If you have something with factorials or products, then the ratio test will usually be helpful because a lot of things can cancel out and you might end up with a limit that's easy to find. Um, remember that if the ratio test or root test result in a limit of one, then nothing can be said and you have to try something else. Um, and if you have something that is raised to the nth power, then the root test is almost always very helpful because the nth root will cancel out an nth power. Um, and then lastly, if you think you could easily take the integral of your terms, if, you're, if the terms of your series were a function, then you could use the integral test. Okay, so those are the basically the eight different, uh, well, six different ideas we learned about along with the P-series and the geometric series, and just sort of some guidelines for how you can determine what test might be appropriate for your series. So all of the examples in this section are not determining convergence or di divergence, but rather determining which test would be the most useful for the series. So let's look at those. n minus one over two n plus one. So right off the bat, we can tell that the limit as n approaches infinity of n minus one over two n plus one is one half using the rules of limits that we've learned in calculus one. Well, that limit is not zero, which means we should use the test for divergence. Um, next up, we have the square root of n cubed plus one over three n cubed plus four n squared plus two. 
So this sort of looks like a piece series because we have, you know, in Raised to a Power all over the place, but it's not directly a piece series. So instead we could compare to a piece series. So if you consider the terms of the numerator and the denominator that have the most power, up top that would be the square root of n cubed, and in the bottom that would be three n cubed. So if you set up a different term, b n, with just those two terms and simplify square root of n cubed is n to the three halves. And then if you simplify that all the way down by subtracting the powers, that works out to be one over three n to the three halves. And now you have a P series that you can compare to. So the limit comparison test would be the best for this example because it's similar to a P series, but not directly. So we compare. Um, this series is alternating because it's negative one to the n. So right off the bat, those are a pretty quick hit. You want to use the alternating series test to check the limit of the absolute value. Example five is two to the k over k factorial. Because we have a factorial in play, the ratio test is going to be the best that we learned in the last section because you're going to be able to cancel out almost all of the terms of the factorial. Remember, this means k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 and so on. So when you set up the ratio, you'll have quite a bit of cancellation happening there and you should be able to find the limit with the ratio test. Okay, 1 over 2 plus 3 to the n. So in this one, what we see is that this series is the closest to a geometric series, 1 over 3 to the n. Remember, 1 over n cubed would be a p series. 1 over 3 to the n would be a geometric series. So because it's similar to a geometric series, but not directly, just like the first example, we can use the comparison test, comparing to 1 over 3 to the n. And there we go.